Hello and welcome to Keys News. I'm Emma White. And I'm Faith Tudor. Here's what's coming up on the programme today. It's the final day for lecturers from 58 different universities across the region to take part in the strike held by the UCU for better pay and pensions. The whole purpose of being in a union is that we support the whole membership. Um, so that means that many people here today are, are foregoing salary, such as myself, because we think it's really important to fight for those that are less advantaged than we are. A street in Salford is to be named after Stan Meller, a famous jockey. The idea was originally rejected by Salford City Council, but the policy was waived through campaigning from councillor John Warmisham. Throughout this week, 58 universities and colleges have been striking today. Marks the last day of the strike. Our reporter Mia Fitton visited Manchester Metropolitan University to witness the crowds gathering in support. It's a dire situation and they've uh, shown the true colours over here. Especially at Manchester Metropolitan, the lack of care for students, the lack of care of staff. They've left us in the dark for the whole of the pandemic. We've come back, we're not really sure what to expect for the future. So we're on strike over a number of issues that have been ongoing for quite a while now. Pay, casualisation, equality. Yeah, quite a lot of my colleagues here, we're really fortunate. We're on permanent contracts and we're on a good salary. But there's also lots of people here at the University of Manchester that are not on permanent contracts. They're on very low pay. And in certain circumstances, we've got evidence that people are working for free here. And that's really not acceptable. So the whole purpose of being in a union is that we support the whole membership um, so that means that many people here today are, are foregoing salary, such as myself, because we think it's really important to fight for those that are less advantaged than we are. The lecturers do not stand alone. The crowds were filled with supporters. Although the strike has caused clear disruption to university students' academics, one student from Manchester Metropolitan University, Gertrude, is fighting with her lecturers, not against. The university take our money and give it to vice-chancellors, chancellors, give them a chauffeur car, give them um, accommodation and don't pay our staff prop properly and it's just a wonder of where our money is actually going. Well earlier our reporter Lois James spoke to the Vice Chancellor of Salford to further discuss some of these issues. Lois started by asking Helen Marshall whether her £200,000 a year salary was too much as university staff face a real terms pay cut. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, maybe they ought to look at Vice Chancellor's wages more generally across the sector in comparable organisations and see where my salary is. I'm not saying I don't earn a lot of money. Is that the same though for comparing lecturers at other universities? Well, they're all on the national pay scale. So the, 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 the pay matrix between the Vice Chancellor's salary, say at Nottingham Trent University and the, and the lecturer's salary there is very different to what it is at Salford. On that point, um, as obviously a woman yourself and myself, how does it feel knowing that women are getting paid 15% less than the men doing the same job? Well, we're working hard on that right now to um, encourage members of staff across all ethnicities and genders to be treated equally, where we're looking at how do we get more women in the professoriate um, so that they are seen as more equal. Salford jockey Stan Meller, who died last year, is to have a street named after him in the Castle Irwell area. Our reporter Neve McDermott talked to a councillor, John Warmersham, who campaigned to have the policy changed. Well, the original was that he was supposed to be 10 years uh, after somebody passed away. Uh, and I just think the opportunity would have gone uh, the building on the race course, the old race course now. Uh, and I think this was the ideal opportunity to remember Stan. And John, has the rules been changed permanently now or is it just for this case? It, it's it's what, what Mike said is, is he's going to probably set up some sort of small working group. And if people want to put special cases forward, each case will be dealt with on an individual basis. 
Um, obviously, it's, you know, it's got to be special reasons. I'm, I'm a big believer in, in celebrating sons and daughters of Salford. And I think anybody that achieves, I think, should be recognised. And I just thought this would be a real fitting tribute because it's, it, it's on the race course where he was so successful. Which colonist, written with brilliant skill by the former champion Stan Meller to pounce at the last fence. Don't forget to head over to our Twitter, at Keys News, to get involved in the discussion all about your Spotify wrapped. Use the hashtag Keys News to tag us in your posts. With the winters getting hotter and the trees flowering sooner, it is clear that humans have caused irreversible damage to our planet. However, is it too late to fight climate change? Our reporter Hannah Patterson visited Fay Watts Zero Waste Shop to hear what she has to say about how we can still make a difference. I started up the dispensary in my zero waste shop because I was fed up of having no um, immediate access to zero waste shops. I felt like I needed to do something. I was getting a lot of like climate anxiety. I felt like I weren't doing enough. I'm doing the best I can, and I really am sort of trying to spread the word and offer Watford and Salford sort of a, just an option, an eco-friendly option. Since beginning her business, she has gained over a million followers on her social media and blog. Her store went from selling utensils to now selling all sorts from food to fragrances that use zero waste or can be fully recyclable. I visit All Abroad Charity Shop in Salford where I spoke to a volunteer about why he thinks it's important to reuse clothes, not only for charity, but for our planet. I personally, if I'm getting rid of clothes, I always want to give it to charity or something like that. I hate the idea of throwing things out and having it, you know, go to a landfill or whatever. I'd much rather it go to some good use, whether that's, you know, to a charity shop when someone else can use it or what we do with our clothes. If there's anything that we can't sell, um, we have someone who comes and collects it and we get a bit of money that for that for the charity and that goes and all gets recycled one way or another. So it's good to know that things can go to a better use than just getting discarded completely. Faye is aware that it's hard to be completely waste free, so she encourages people to make even the smallest change to make a big difference. Every little change actually does make a difference. So if it's something as simple as swapping your um, plastic toothbrush when it runs out to a bamboo one. If every four months now you buy a bamboo toothbrush rather than a plastic one, that's stopping that going to landfill because every plastic toothbrush ever made is still out there. Hannah Patterson, Keys News. We are now going over to our reporter, Caitlin Hyam, who is at Salford Keys, talking to one of the artists about the Lights Festival. The Lightwaves Festival will begin here in Media City. As you can see behind me, some of the installations have already been set up. I'm joined here now with Gemma Davies, the creator of the Illumin Illumifornium. <laughs> Gemma, how does it feel to take part in the event? It feels incredible. I think Lightwaves has been a festival that we've wanted to come to for a long time. So yeah, we're really thrilled to be here. We've been, we're happy to be invited and excited to share it with the people of Salford. Fantastic. And what was the inspiration behind the Illumifonium? Okay, so myself and my husband, we're actually musicians and artists. We used to do a lot of sort of group facilitation, music making. And so Illumifonium is about bringing people together to create in a way where they feel safe and kind of reinstalling that childhood like curiosity. and desire to play that we have sort of bashed out of us as adults. Oh, fantastic. Well, I am so looking forward to seeing it being lit up. Um, the Lightwaves Festival will be on here for the next 10 days. Admission is free, so wrap up warm and come and enjoy the possibilities of Lightwaves. Back to you in the studio. We are joined here in the studio with our sports editor, Ben Rudd, to update us of the latest sports stories. We start with Manchester United, who beat Arsenal 3-2 last night at Old Trafford thanks to Cristiano Ronaldo's 800th and 801st goal in football. After the game, Michael Carrick announced that he will be stepping down from his post as he makes way for Ralph Ragnar, who will take charge at the end of the season, starting with Crystal Palace on Sunday. During the game, a big banner in support of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was displayed in the Stratford end, thanking him for his support and service during the time. A huge fight between Amir Khan and Cal Brook was announced for the Manchester AO Arena next year in February. It's a huge rivalry which is commonly known as the biggest rivalry in British boxing and both fighters will be aiming to make a name for themselves on this night. England's women's national team beat the Latvia women's national team 20-0 on Tuesday night thanks to Ellen White's record-breaking hat-trick which took her to 48 senior goals level with Harry Kane and Gary Lineker. Alicia Russo also scored a hat-trick 
uh, Man Manchester United player and easily breeze past a Latvian team. Salford City have been drawn against National League leaders Chesterfield in the FA Cup second round and I, we were aiming to make way to the third round to play the likes of Manchester United and Manchester City. Rochdale Hornets player Sean Penkiewicz signed a new contract in, as a 39-year-old player, which will allow him to play in his 40s, which is unheard of in rugby. His 20-year career spanned from Halifax to Huddersfield Giants, and he doesn't seem like stopping now. That's all for sports. For the third year in a row, hate crime towards the LGBT plus community has increased in Greater Manchester. According to figures taken by ITV News between January and August of this year, there was a total of 1,436 sexual orientation crimes reported by people within the community. 262 of these reports were recorded in July alone. Salford currently has the second highest COVID-19 infection rate in Greater Manchester, but is still below the national average. In the region, there have been two new expect suspected cases of the new Omicron variant. The two individuals from Bolton are said to be linked and members of the same household. Earlier we asked you on Twitter all about your Spotify wrapped. The results are now in and out of the 27 votes, 55% of you voted for over 2,000 minutes listening to their top artist. Only 4% voted less than 500 minutes. So what, what, what was your top Spotify? Um, my top Spotify artist was The Clash for this year. What was yours? Mine was David Guetta. Oh, wow. Let's have a look at what other people have been voting. So, so I know that someone has a really big crush on Taylor Swift. I have heard that uh, too. Samuel, <laughs> at Izzard Samuel on Twitter, my top artist is Taylor Swift. She's my absolute fave. Same. <laughs> I love Taylor Swift. It was buzzing to hear that. <laughs> That's all we have time for today. Thank you for watching and see you next week.